Okay, so five, way, five ways to fail your Unity game, and that's a rather technical discussion. I'm going to explain you fine based ways to fail uh, from a technical side. And uh, I mean, I decided to highlight the, the worst approaches uh, to designing a Unity project. Since, well, optimizations is an endless topic, and sometimes it makes sense uh, to know what to not do, rather to know what to do. So, um, I tried to pick like rather non-obvious things. They may seem obvious, but actually lots of users uh, make these mistakes. What makes me believe uh, I'd rather uh, put them here. So here we go. Never test outside of Unity Editor. Um, actually, that's what people do. Uh, people assume that, um, well, maybe not assume, but it just somehow settles down in their minds that their top-notch uh, workstation with uh, eight uh, CPU cores, um, uh, 16 gigab gigabytes of RAM, and the uh, SSD rate performs exactly the same as uh, the tablet where their game is going to run on. So that, that is not the case. I have a sm small graphic here to highlight of how much not the case it is. And even if you're targeting web player or standalone, it's, it's still like what you performance that you have in the editor, right? When you click that fancy play button and then uh, test your game, it's still different. And uh, even when profiling, even when profiling standalone game, it still makes sense to actually publish to standalone, right? Or to web player, then attach that just published game to the profiler, and then you get uh, proper uh, profiler data. Since um, profiling right in the editor has some overhead, and uh, I mean, data is relative, and it kind of works, but you get much more reliable data when profiling from like external app. I mean, like from standalone, right, from web player, like the published app, not within the editor. Another thing that uh, people don't take into account that often is that Unity actually like has two worlds inside, right? So like the C++ world, native world, where, well, Unity is written in C++, right? So like native code. And then uh, you scripts, we run scripts on .NET, and that means that most objects do exist in both worlds. So uh, game objects, right? So like, Imagine that same object uh, has like a actual instance and a wrapper. And uh, if you're a genius programmer, uh, or you treat yourself genius, and uh, use really fancy low level functions to manage your memory on your own instead of believing that Unity does it better, sometimes you may end up in situations where you have object uh, destroyed in one world and still persistent in another world, and that may be tricky. So, actually, I mean, since the, I have only 30 minutes and this topic is really complex, what I did is I picked a few mm, in-depth presentations that explain this topic, and I put them to the comment in this very uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna tweet it, I'm gonna explain how to get it, and then you'll get in depth into this complex um, question. So that's another thing that um, people use really often, though, well, I mean, you do understand that you allocate new objects each frame, right? So like, if you put new to update, and well, that means that this variable is create like this object is created each frame and then it's is gonna get garbage collected. Um, it depends on your target platform, but and like on the, on the performance on this platform and uh, of how much do you abuse um, Unity and, and and garbage collector and like mono runtime overall. But it may end up that you really 
that your game really slows down, especially on, um, on for example, Windows Phone. It's, it's, it, it takes a bit of overhead to, um, to, to jump between the mentioned both worlds, right? Like between managed and native code, and uh, the overhead on uh, Windows Phone platform is the biggest probably of all the platforms that it supports. So again, it depends, but you should really think about it. Like, if you allocate too much unnecessary object is frame, this may be bad. Assume object load immediately. Um, again, that's the thing that happens really often. Uh, first of all, because, well, you have powerful machines, and that's when you load all your textures and uh, all your asset sounds. And they load almost instantly, especially if you're working on a mobile title and uh, test it on your desktop, uh, then you don't notice that. But once you start testing on uh, actual device, especially of on lower end devices, then you notice like various kind of hiccups. So um, we have various techniques to work around that. Uh, well, obviously streaming and and uh, well, compression is even more obvious here, but. What I wanted to highlight here, that you used um, Profiler. It's getting more and more powerful, it's getting more and more useful, and again, uh, I've included a link to a video where this is explained in depth, but what, like, the main point that I wanted to highlight in this slide, that you use Memory Profiler, I mean, it's, it's it, by default, it shows really simple data, but then there is a drop down like show me the stuff, and then it shows stuff. And um, it's really notice is if, for example, your artist's uh, hand slipped and instead of committed like compressed texture, your uh, brave guy committed like uncompressed 200 megabytes to, to a game, and then, I mean, it, it gonna gets unnoticed unless you profile your memory. Well, it's probably gonna be slow as well. So uh, use this thing and uh, take care about what you use and where you use and how do you load it and uh, think about like lar larger assets. How, uh, how will they be loaded, especially like on uh, different platforms, depending on what you're targeting. Probably this slide is uh, the final one. Uh, the final one, in a way that uh, most, I mean, like, I, I did like this obvious thing, the final and most important in the slide, um, because that's what um, most people do. They don't read manual because they think that, well, I have like five years Unity experience, and I am a C++ coder, and I know it better. And, well, yes, you may know it better, but then, um, like, you may know stuff well enough, but then you don't exactly know how exactly Unity works internally, how exactly uh, brave Unity developers did it. So you may use something that is mm, obvious to you, like that it shouldn't harm performance, but then it does. For example, uh, number eight, non-uniform scaling. Um, say, when you scale X, but leave Y and Z persistent, it's, it, it makes Unity to do lots of overhead, like to, to recreate lots of data. Or for example, when you mark object statics and then you move them, again, it, it makes Unity do like perform a special overhead, like allocate, recreate, uh, copy memory. So, and I mean like, for example, debug log. It's like, it's, it looks like a harmless function, but then it actually locates lots of data and slow. Uh, on GUI, well, on GUI is like the worst example, but uh, even leaving, for example, empty update, empty, empty fixed update function in your scripts, actually Unity has to, uh, Unity processes them, even though they're empty. Unity doesn't call that out. So, I, I mean, actually, while reading through the docs, you get a lot of these tips, and uh, and then you understand how Unity works better, and then you write better code, and then you make better games, and uh, then your next step would be to check out the learn section. Um, 
of Unity website, it started pretty basic, and um, stuff that uh, was initially put uh, to the section was pretty basic, but now it's getting more and more advanced stuff, and uh, we actually publish all the videos and most presentation that we have of y Unity people. So uh, it's actually a good source of um, information, lots of stuff to, like, advanced stuff to, uh, to pick up there, so draw through it. It's good. And that's a kind of motivation slide. I wanted to motivate you people, like, that all the awesome games you do, maybe initially, uh, ultimately loaded on all the platforms that uh, can be ever reached by user. So do that, uh, do awesome games, do highly performant games, and uh, care about platforms that you're targeting, and uh, even if you're making like something that's gonna work only on um, high-powered uh, hardware, like uh, desktops, for example, still think about the uh, mobiles, and uh, when the game becomes a hit, you'll want it to go on the app stores. And there is a Twitter name that's uh, the fastest way to get slides with links to videos that I promise to do, so follow me on Twitter. That's actually a good habit. I sometimes post nice uh, things there. Um, and here we go. Actually, we can talk about uh, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about now. Yes. So questions. Actually, I was like I was told that I am to present 20 minutes, so that's how I did my slides. Four minutes per slide, and that's what I trained uh, myself to. And uh, and yes. So, are you still digesting? So okay, meanings like that was, was that too hardcore? Um, yeah, you ask if it's too hardcore. Uh, yeah, it, it would be an interesting question to ask uh, how many uh, developers are in the audience or, or, or how, how many people would have experience with object-oriented programming or something, uh, because you showed, yeah, some, some code and yeah. Um, yes, but uh, normally I do that, but I was still, uh, I, I was given 20 minutes. <laughs> so that was the reason uh, why I didn't do that, like normally I present myself, like I explain why would you uh, want to listen to me, and uh, like why my experience is relevant to, uh, in the area, but again since, well, because of so little time and because I was late, because I was uh, lost, I decided to like shrink it down. Whether it was good or bad decision, well, uh, we'll see, but at least uh, we'll have slides with for f further links, so you can at least uh, read more and probably understand whatever I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, is there a tool that would analyze your Unity project and would give you tips on performance improvements, like easy tips, something obvious that you wouldn't see, but Unity sees it? Well, I mean, certainly it makes sense to think about uh, this particular idea along with a make game button. Um, I mean, no, actually, jokes aside, would. Mm, what we try to prototype is like imagine Unity profiler that shows not like various spikes and data, but actually shows your game and colors uh, the slowest objects red, then medium slow objects green, and like the like fastest object you know white whatever. So we try to hack it in, uh, but uh, well it works. On, well suddenly that was prototype right, and uh, well it's it's. Like, the long story short, certainly we, ha we had this idea and we tried to prototype it, but not that it is coming, like, in, the, in, in for example, next six months. I think you put a, a, a beta version or of a test, uh, of a test uh, you can do in Unity on the asset store. 
together with the uh, prototype uh, assets? Um, well, if I correctly understood the question, like, uh, are you talking about the testing framework that we've recently blogged about? Yes. That's a good question. Uh, I think right now it exists in the form of just package link from the blog post on Unity Blogs. But a few weeks ago, I spoke to, actually, to our actual uh, QA team who did that. And uh, their plan was to polish it and to put this on SS Store along with a ton of manuals. Um, they have a really nice roadmap. And uh, when, whenever they complete, uh, all these plans, uh, Unity are gonna become not only the most awesome tool in the world on the world to create games, but also most o awesome tool in the world to to test games. Uh, it's 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 basically gonna be really easy. So um, think, for example, like as easy as just putting debug log, and then debug log cools out when you whenever you make like release build, not a debug build. In a similar way. Uh, you'll be able to integrate unit tests, integrational tests, and uh, like the rapid prototyping, the rapid development gonna be even more rapid and include testing. Uh, so that's again, the, these are plans. And um, right now, well, right now that's just separate package, but the next step is to put it in the SS store, and the next step after the next step actually is integrated into Unity. Uh, I cannot like say numbers whether it's like within four cycle, four X cycle, or whenever else. But so that's the roadmap, and this are the plans. At least I was pitched that idea by our QA team. So <laughs> blame them, not me, if something slips off. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for questions because we need to get ready for the next speaker. Um, thank you very much. And I think maybe you'll be available here next to the door for oh a few yes. minutes after the talk if anyone has any more specific technical questions. I'll be available and my slides are going to be available. So like, you'll have more time to concentrate on them. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much.